The Doug Wright Show, where Utah news breaks on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Boy, Jason, what can I say? You got to do this more often. You've made me a popular guy. <laughs> I mean, look at this. We've got our uh, television stations from throughout the market, we've got newspaper reporters, we've got camera people in here, and their cameras are not pointed at me right now they are pointed at you this is quite a significant day and quite a significant announcement backtrack us up here when did you decide that you weren't going to run for another term in congress well you know i we've been thinking about this as a family for a little bit Uh, i got on my knees and prayed about it but on march 26 i turned 50 and i'm sleeping on a cot in my office that week um i got wife you know wife i love and kids i adore I spent about 1,500 plus nights away from my family, and it was just time to sort of reevaluate and recalibrate uh, my life. And it's a tough decision. I, I love serving in Congress, but I love my family more. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm healthy. It's going well in Congress. I'm a chairman. I got full support there with the Republicans are in charge, but I didn't want to go there forever. I, I really meant it when I said I was going to get in, serve, and then get out. And and now is as good a time as any. And, and I wanted to do it early so people could get a chance. There are other people that can serve and can do this. And and so, you know, I just kind of made the decision and thought, well, we should let that news get out and let other people get prepared to to do what I, you know, did, uh, you know, eight, nine years ago. So. Did did anything about the the current climate uh, in politics in general and in Washington, perhaps in, in particular, uh, you look and it's not just it's a lot of Republicans right now. But right. even Dianne Feinstein had a rocky time the other day in a town hall meeting. The temperament, the civility, the, the pressures. Has that affected you at all? Well, I, I tend to gravitate towards I tend to be attracted to the volatility. I like to go into the, the firestorm. It's partly why I was a place kicker back in the day for BYU. I kind of like being in that position. I don't mind it. It doesn't really phase me. And in this decision, it really didn't have anything to do with it. it it's uh, Think about that. 1,500 plus nights away from my family over the last eight years. That's that's a lot. And it takes its toll. And I, I joke about the cot and I laugh about it. It's not comfortable. My wife likes to tell me, well, it's not supposed to be comfortable because I never did want to settle in there forever. But that is much more of a factor than any sort of raucous town hall or discontent within you know the body itself i don't i don't mind that doesn't phase me in fact i think i'll kind of miss that part of it but i my family is much more important i I, and i don't mean to misquote or anything but i seem to recall conversations that you and you and i have had privately and on the air where you said basically once the chairmanship ran out you were you were pretty much done back in washington and and wanted to come home and much of what you just said but i kind of thought we we might go another round here well, you know, you, you always kind of leave the door open for possibilities. I'm trying to leave the door open for possibilities down the road. But for 2018, I'm not going to run for the House. I'm not going to run for the Senate. I'm not going to run for anything um, and, you know, go back to the private sector. It's where I came from. Um, and I think that's the way it should be. People should get in, serve, and get out. I don't think you should be there for a lifetime. Let's talk about the reaction in Washington, D.C., because this chairmanship, it, yeah. it is a very, very powerful yeah. position. You've brought some very interesting and powerful folks out here to Utah with you. I remember Elijah Cummings sitting right mm-hmm. here, you know, in, in the chair next to you. And what an interesting conversation that was. What does the majority leader, uh, not majority leader, pardon me, the, uh, the uh, um, what am I well, talking about? Ranking with... member. Ranking member. What does right. he have to say? I, I did talk to Elijah Cummings this morning, and, and uh, we have a very special uh, personal relationship. We disagree on just about every issue, uh, but we get along fabulously. And he said, look, as long as you're taking care of your family first, and that's what's important to you, I'll, I'll wholly support you. Uh, we both talked about how we'll miss working with each other, but... He's always been supportive of me in a personal level, and I have of him, and and um, and he knows I'm making the right decision for the on, on my terms, and it's a good thing. What did the speaker say when you? Uh, Paul I did Ryan? have a conversation with uh, Paul Ryan last night, and he just, he said, "Please, please don't <laughs> don't do this." And I said, "Well, Paul, I've already already made this decision." And I spoke with the majority leader Kevin McCarthy as well, and a host of other members. Trey Gowdy is about my best friend in the on the planet and certainly in the, in the Congress. And, uh, 
he and I have touted about this quite a bit over the last year, really. And we're very similar stations in life. You know, Trey Gowdy's got kids getting older. My life's changed. Um, my two, two of my three kids got married last year. Uh, proud of my son. He's going to UVA Law School, so he's going out to the University of Virginia. My daughter's in, in Michigan, and we're going to be empty nesters soon. And I, I can't, can't even imagine having Julie here in Utah and me in, in somewhere else in the world 200 plus nights a year. I just don't want to do that. You've had some significant mentors in your career. When when you and I first yeah. got to know each other, it yeah. wasn't while you were at BYU. It was when you were running the campaign for John Huntsman Jr. Yeah. And yeah. then, of course, when you were chief of, of staff. Yeah. And and then surrogate for Mitt Romney yeah. in 2002. 2000- yeah. 12, we, we saw you all over the place, and uh, and even in 2016. What was their, did, did you seek their advice, and what was their advice? Um, I, I have not chatted with them recently specifically about this decision. Um, during the Romney campaign, I spent about 100 nights on the road campaigning for Mitt Romney, and I'm glad I did. I, I have no regrets on any of this. Um, but, you know, uh, Mitt Romney, I think, did an exceptional job, was a good uh, example of bringing his family along every step of the way. Now they have the financial means to do that. I don't I, like, I make a handsome salary. I'm not trying to complain about that at all, but I can't afford to have two places, one in DC and one in Utah and pay for family to travel back and forth. And I, I hope there's a serious discussion about this. We, we make a very handsome salary. I'm not complaining about that at all, but you're asking people to go away from their families night after night after every week. I mean, I'm on a plane every three, four days. And I just don't have the personal wealth to go and have Julie join me on all those, all those planes and flights. And we bring her out in time to time on political events. Um, but yeah, Washington DC is one of the most expensive places on the planet. And, uh, you know, there's, there's more to life than just serving. And and I, I love it. I love the work, but, Again, I think Mitt Romney has done this the right way. I think John Huntsman did it the right way. He's always able to bring his family and his kids. And and uh, I think both those families are rooted in their family. And I'd like to think I'm like that, too. I just I just don't want to spend another 200-plus nights away from my family. It's that simple. As you look back over the years since 2009, when, when you actually took the, the oath yeah. of office, ran in 2008, what have been some of the, as you look back, at not just your chairmanship, but your time in, in Congress, yeah. what will be those moments you'll hang your hat on that you're particularly proud of? You know, we, um, the checks and balances on the executive branch, I take very seriously. And, and obviously, the, uh, the first eight years that I was there were all focused on, on the Obama administration. I got elected the same time as Barack Obama. But if you look at each of the major investigations and scandals that were found, we were right in the heart of those. Everything from Benghazi to the IRS to the email scandal, uh, certainly having Director Comey come before the committee, and I'm chairing that committee, and uh, it had an impact on the election. Um, But we have done a host of those types of things. Some are very quiet, never hear about them, and we know they make a difference. Um, I think probably the most impactful thing I'll remember are the, in this case, men who went to war for the United States of America and lost their lives. And they were from our district. And going and talking with those families, i that was the hardest thing I did in Congress, but it was also the most rewarding. Yeah. We, we had a discussion a little earlier with Jason Perry, executive, the director of the Hinckley Institute of Politics. Yeah. And he talked about how the dynamics have changed, and especially with your committee with the investigations and uh, some of the subjects of the investigations. You've received some criticism, obviously, for not jumping in on a Trump relationship with China, with, pardon me, Russia, and so on. Has that, has that changed the flavor? Was that at all a, a part of the consideration of not continuing no, again? I, I, first of all, I don't think it's been reported very well because we did do investigations on mar lago We did do investigations on, on General Flynn. We did do an investigation of the Trump Hotel there in Washington, D.C. Elijah Cummings and I, since Donald Trump has become president, have sent out more than 300 letters, the majority of which we do jointly. Uh, We passed out bipartisan uh, postal reform. None of that makes the news because we are doing it jointly. When we came to the conclusion of did the president review or reveal classified information at Mar-a-Lago in a non-classified setting, we went to the Situation Room together 
Um, and we came to the conclusion, having done, conducted that investigation, that there was no classified information revealed. I'm not aware of any, not even a single national news network who did that. But we did it jointly, and we came to a conclusion that some people didn't like, which was there was no, mis, uh, no wrongdoing. Um, but we have done it together. So I think there's a lot of misreporting. But, you know, that that's not a new phenomenon, Doug. I mean, that, that's that, the world I live in. <laughs> that actually happens? Yes. <laughs> it's shocking, I know. But that's happened the entire, you know, nine years that I've been in Congress. You and I had some tough and frank discussions, not yeah. contentious, but about where the Republican Party was going and right. who was likely to be elected and ultimately right. who was elected. Uh, I'm going to just ask you straight up, have you come to some peace on that? I mean, you said some pretty strong things. Uh, Congressman Stewart said some very strong things. I heard the governor say some very strong right, right. things. Have you come to peace with a Donald Trump presidency? Well, look, at you, uh, you fight for what you believe in, uh, but when the American people make a decision, then you get behind it. And, and uh I originally, in this past election, supported Marco Rubio. In fact, just before he went on air, the last call, call I had was from Marco calling and congratulating me and saying, hey, I totally understand. I totally get it. And uh, he's, he's just a very good friend. And I, I thought he would be a great president. And maybe someday he will become the president of the United States. I think he'd be wonderful. But, um, you know, when the voters said otherwise, they wanted Donald Trump. And, and he went through the gyrations of endorsing him, then withdrawing my endorsement. But ultimately, I did vote for him. I mean, the, the vote before us was Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. And I'm just I'm so happy that Hillary Clinton is not the president. I can't even tell you. Let's take a brief break. And when we come back, you've alluded a lot to the future, going yeah. back into the private uh, sector for at least a while. We'll talk about the future of uh, Congressman Jason Chaffetz, representing at least for the next little while the 3rd Congressional District here in the state of Utah. All here at KSL News Radio. We have much more in store for you. So stay with us here on The Doug Wright Show. Have you noticed? A